Hello YouTubers. Uh, this is a new session where I get to walk you through a new uh, NuGet library that I put together to serve a particular purpose when it comes to test driving uh, uh, Blazor applications. Uh, so let me just, you know, kind of roll back and give you a little bit of story. So, you know, I've recently moved into a new team and we are building a, a new devices management experiences portal uh, in, in Blazor. And one of the beautiful things about Blazor is that it allows you to kind of, if you're a back-end, hardcore back-end engineer, you know, it's not too hard to digest because it allows you to run C Sharp in the browser, right? And, you know, once Steve Sanderson opened up that door, you know, now you can't close it. You know, that Pandora's box, you can't close it back because now all the ideas in the world that, you know, has been, you know, thoroughly tested and experimented with on the back end is starting to leak into that, you know, front end world. You know, things that back end engineers would just take a second to think about. A front end engineer that's probably using JavaScript, you know, with React or Angular or whatever the framework, the, the coolest thing that kids use these days, you know, are using, you know, would kind of take a little bit, a couple of cycles to kind of think about and vice versa you know it felt like these two campaigns of engineers are just kind of living completely isolated and they're solving their problems in their own way uh, so now that you have blazer you have c sharp running in the browser you know you're going to start running into situations where you'll be like well this is how i do it in the back end you know why don't i bring something like this in the front end let me just show you the problem here and then hopefully you know you'll understand you know what's going on in uh, here's here's a project my team and i are working on at microsoft and you know, this is a devices management experience system. It basically goes and says, hey, here is, you know, the HoloLens devices that you have and, you know, a bunch of attachments to these devices. You know, here's how you're going to test this and all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's great. Okay, that's the domain. Great, right? But the problem with that is, is that every now and then you're going to need to basically build what we call isolated, you know, CSS for particular components in your system. So, you know, I basically want to see the lab overview. I want to basically uh, be able to see the lab name and, uh, you know, devices management experience, you know, version, a description about my lab, you know, things that kind of allows me to know what's going on in my lab, what, how many HoloLens devices we're testing and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes you have to add this little, you know, uh, CSS work to kind of, you know, enhance the experience, right? Well, of course, this is a very, very early stage project. I literally just joined that team about a month and a half ago. So we're still kind of working, you know, through how we're going to build the technologies and solve our problems. But one thing that was ultimately very obvious to me is that I can't test these things. These styles that are sitting here, there is no way for me to reach into these, you know, values and you know change things like today this is of course fully test driven you know thanks to the amazing team that is working with me you know day and night to kind of adapt to that kind of uh, style of work see I'm running all my tests about 30, 36 tests they're passing if I go here and say make this 15 million pixels and I run this guy I have absolutely no way of saying oh that's wrong this is this is not rendering, right? Someone might come and say, "Well, use play right and go, you know, test the end to end." Yeah, the end to end is great. That's a, it has a different purpose. I want to make sure that my component itself is intact, right? I don't want to wait for an end to end test to happen to actually for 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 an, for the engineer to actually know that this is you know going on. Acceptance tests happen after the fact. I want to test drive, you know, values that are changing. Uh, in my component. Okay, so this is a big problem for me, right? If you want to build things standardized in a proper way, this becomes a big problem because there is no way for me to catch something like that. So I thought about this for a while, you know, people who are around me would, you know, know that, you know, when a thought like this, you know, comes to mind, it takes me about a couple of days to kind of kind of process that information, process that problem, and then come up with a solution. I said, okay, what if we turned you know our styles into c sharp objects and once they become c sharp objects it becomes so much easier and simpler for us to just go and say oh you know i can just test this because this is an object that i'm actually dealing with right okay i looked on the web for people that kind of tried 
to test drive CSS and there is almost none like there's one tiny attempt you know from years and years ago someone trying to kind of figure out C sharp you know with CSS but it didn't quite do what I was looking for so obviously you know as a person who knows how to build you know uh, NuGet packages whoever taught me this probably is regretting it because you know I you know this is how I'm gonna be solving my problems I'm just gonna find a solution come up with an idea and produce it however way possible an API or NuGet whatever the case may be so I went ahead and built a NuGet package this is a very experimental package yes it is test driven of course even my POCs will be test driven but uh, that's the whole purpose actually of this video but this library I called it sharp styles and it has it has like a suit you know it looks really nice and it's very you know very very beta very very original version I'm gonna I'm gonna install this library here for a second okay sharp styles installed the library and then I'm gonna go and try to kind of test drive my components so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to one of my components here let me let me first show you what the components look like right when we're running everything let me show you what I'm like so instead of calling an actual API I'm just gonna fake it right I'm gonna go here and say you know private uh, list of labs right create random labs so I'm just gonna kind of um, instead of you know connecting to an API and showing you what's actually in my lab I'm just gonna give you a bunch of random data and then I'm gonna go here and say filler equal new filler and this filler is gonna be for a list of labs I don't think the dynamics filler is here yet yeah let me install that normally dynamics filler is something I install on my um, on my on my test project but not on this one so, okay so let me go back here let me do this okay this is installed here is the filler great and I want to generate a list of things right so I'm gonna go here and say setup you know, how many do we want you know on item uh, let's see uh, item I can list item count around three and then I go and say filler dot create okay so this is gonna create a bunch of you know uh, bogus data for me right I'm using this as a replacement for uh, having to actually call the API so I'm gonna go here and say value task dot from result and here's create a bunch of labs done and done great okay so me running this, you know, maybe I need to disable, let's see, you know, it trying to kind of read things. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to lie to it, you know, because I'm just going to say, hey, here's a fake API that you think is there, but it's actually not. Okay. And then I'm going to run my system. Just a quick setup like this, just to get things up and running. Let's take a look at what this guy's going to generate. Here we go. Here. So this is basically, you know, the very, very early are very very early attempts you know to kind of and if every time I kind of refresh this is going to generate new data right you know it depends on what I'm doing you know here's a bunch of HoloLens devices sometimes it comes back sometimes it needs a little bit of work whatever the case may be okay I'm going to target this little status code up here right this little tiny status code that's sitting up there I'm going to go and say watch this if I go into this status code all the way down here and literally just comment this whole thing and run my applic my tests are gonna be like oh it's all good and dandy dude you, you know you got you did the work and everything is working just great but in reality look at the status code it's a complete disaster it's completely destroyed my application just like that and it completely destroyed the engineering experience and everything else in between right that's not cool especially when your unit tests are saying hey dude it's all good and dandy out there you know look I'm gonna run my tests here after I commented all of this and my tests are gonna be like yeah it's 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 all good yep yeah that's not okay so how do we test drive this thing right here's what we're gonna do first of all I'm gonna create a little component here in the in the models area under views under components lab status I'm gonna go and create this uh, class called uh, status component style so this is a special component and this special component will basically be focusing on uh, having all the styles that I need 
to be in there. Now focus with me on this one because I literally just invented this. So you're not going to find this on Stack Overflow. So just hear me out on this one. So out of this, I'm going to inherit from uh, the, the sharp style. So this model would basically be the abstraction layer that abstracts away that sharp style stuff. OK. What else do I want to do? If you look at the bottom here, you will notice that there is a thing called selector. This uh, colon colon deep is a blazer specific thing, so it can transcend to low level items. I, I have a trick for it. Actually, this is like a an unintended side effect that's actually completely good news because we won't even need it, even though the library can support it. But what I'm going for here is something called status image. And this status image is a CSS rule for a class type, right? There's, you know, in CSS, there is hard code styles on the on the element. That's the strongest of them all. Don't do that. That's really bad, bad practice. Um, you can use an ID. That's the second strongest. You can use a class or you could use an element, right? So these are the four or five things that you can play around with. So I need a class, right? If you're building an ID, you would need to go and say my ID like this, right? There's all these different kind of ways you, that you can write uh, CSS. Nothing scares backend engineers like CSS and HTML, right? They look at it and be like, oh my God, I need to wrap up on this. What does it do? What does it do? Right? Let's simplify this for the world. So I need status image. I'm just going to go back into my new model here and I'm going to go and create a property. And this property is going to be also of type sharp style. And I'm going to call it status image in the proper C sharp standardized way of writing properties, just like that. But on top of this, I'm going to go here and say CSS class, CSS class. And this is also coming from this cool library that I just built or published. It's called sharp styles. So putting this annotation on top of the property is basically telling me that when you serialize that property, serialize it as a CSS class, not an ID or an element or anything like that. If I want it to have that deep annotation, I could go here and just say CSS deep, and that's specific to Blazor, but we won't need it. Thank God we won't, because it's basically, I have my own kind of issues with that approach. But anyway, CSS class, status image, great. I'm going to go down to my base components and create a new base component. This base component, you're going to create it once, use it everywhere, right? So it's not, you're, it's not something that you're going to do every time. I'm going to call it here style base. And this style base guy is literally having just an annotation here that says style, style dot two, st at style dot to CSS. Where is this to CSS coming from? That's the sharp style library. Okay. That means I need a back end of a front end, right? So I'm going to put a class in here and this class is going to be called uh, style base dot razor dot CS. Okay. Style base dot razor dot CS. Here's some copyrights. Our very, very beloved Microsoft and here's style base and this component base. And uh, let's see, component base. Yeah, there you go. And then I'm going to pass in a parameter in here. And this parameter of a sharp style type. And that's the style. That's the style that I, that I can basically test and play around with. OK. OK. So this is a component, a base component, that I'm going to set in here. And this base component is going to tell me I'm going to use it to inject styles into my component. OK, now let's go back to that component that lost all its CSS, right? Let's go back here and we're going to do two things here. First of all, I'm going to go here and initiate, initiate something called style base to first make sure that this style base is null. So this is style, uh, style base, uh, style, I'll, I'll call it style element like that. Okay. So this is one guy. I also want my styles, which is status component style 
to be in here as a property. So see, I'm bringing CSS styles into strongly typed objects right here, right now. Okay, now what? What are we going to do next? Well, the next step here is for me to go and test drive this, right? We need a failing test. I need to go back into my status component. Um, let's see here. Device status component test. There it is. And let's just verify a couple of things. So my initial status component dot uh, style should be null. I also, my, I have my initial component style. That's the style element should also be null. Great. This guy will pass, of course, because I didn't set up anything for for this guy in any way, shape, or form. But I need a new test, and my new test here will say, here's my new test. My new test here will say should set up styles, and that's more important than the statuses. So in fact, public void should set up component styles. This is all brand new things. I'm discovering as I go, right? I'm basically creating this as I go. Okay, what's the first thing? The first thing I want to set up the expected style that's going to be applied to this component, right? So here's my expected style equal new status component style. And this status component style has a status image. So here's a sharp style for you. Here you go. And then I can go here and say, so this status image, I want to set up a bunch of things in it, right? Do you remember this little uh, value that we had, the bunch of values that we had in here? If you look at this guy, I'm going to take that guy, I'm going to steal it, and I'm going to go back here and use it here as my expected. So I'm going to go here. You're going to find all the possible um, uh, CSS rules in there. I already took care of that for you, right? So literally, if you do control space like this, every single rule in CSS that you can dream of is there. And not just that, you'll find the description for it. Like if I go like this and you hover over this guy, it will show you the name. Uh, nope, actually, that's not it. Hold on. If I go into definition, if you go into definition for this guy, come on, come on. Right? Uh, why well, didn't give you the definitions? Well, that's kind of heartbreaking. Okay, we'll we'll figure out a way to to populate those. I know they're there. You know, I don't know why they're not um they're not populated. That's that's sad. Anyway, I'll fix that for you. But the part that I really want to care about is that I want to go here and say I want to set up the height, and that's gonna be 15 px. Right. Remember, my component is screwed up, right? Because I already commented all of that, right? And my width is supposed to be uh, uh, 15 px, and I want my margin right to be 9 px. I want my margin bottom to be 3 px, something like that. Of course, you're not supposed to be setting these values, and we're supposed to be percentage and whatnot. But like I said, this is experimental prototyping let's go out there try things out and then we'll add a framework and all that but these are my styles look I set up my styles in a strongly typed object well that's great what else do I want to do I want to go render my component now because I'm ready right I'm gonna go here and say this dot rendered component equal render component I don't know if this guy takes input parameters honestly let's see does it ah expected CSS class input status oh it gets bunch it gets bunch of statuses and stuff like that do I care to put a status in there I don't know I you know we'll see uh, what happens if I don't pass a status at all it will try to figure it out right so if in the component itself if I don't pass a status it will say hey anything else go ahead and return whatever okay I'm, I'm okay with that let's go back here because it's outside of the purpose of this test, so it doesn't matter, right? So this is status, image status, component, or what's the component called? Status component, sorry. Status component. Okay, so that's my component. I'm rendering it. And then in here, I want to verify two things. Number one, 
that my style element should not be null. So I want to make sure that this guy already attached to a markup element. Because if it's null, that basically means I didn't render that markup element. Okay, that's number one. Number two, that the rendered status component that instance that style element dot style should be equivalent to the, the expected style. So now I'm basically literally saying you have to pass that style into my component in order for it to render properly. Literally test driving CSS in here. Okay, let me push that guy down. I don't like my methods with billies. So there's a try to kind of avoid having a, like a little, you know, billy out of your, your method. Okay, what else do I want to do? Well, uh, even before all of that, I want to go and say, maybe at the very bottom here, I want to go and say this dot instance, let's see, dot rendered component dot instance dot uh, style should also be equivalent to expected style. So this is the setup of the property and then the passing of the property to the instance, right? I'm going to make that guy first because that's actually what happens before everything and anything. Okay, so this guy should fail, right? Because now I don't have any styles, right? Nothing here is working uh, for that purpose. So let's go here, let's see. Hopefully it fails for the right reasons though, right? Because, let's see. So this guy will say, hey, I expected expected this style to have these styles. <laughs> and it'll list everything except for the one that you're passing in. I, I need to figure that one out as well. But it's basically saying I couldn't find one that actually matches, you know, the style that you're trying to pass in. Okay, that's a good failing test. Right, let me put that in a branch so my team doesn't get angry at me because we promised each other we're going to be pairing. So I'm going to go here and say users, Hassan, Habib, uh, POC, uh, sharp styles. Okay. I'm going to keep that, you know, demo PR for a while just for people to take a look at it. And then once we adapt it as a team, hopefully things will, will, will look up. Okay. So this is a failing test. It's really important that I go here and say, this is, this is a fail, right? Cause it's test driven. Here's a fail. And now I want to go back and make this pass, right? So how am I, how am I going to make this pass? I'm going to run it. You know, I'm going to show you how, how important this is. So here's your status component. I'm going to go down here and create private, right? Uh, uh, void setup style. Okay. And then I'm going to go here and say, okay, where's my style? So this is style equal new status component style and on that status component style there's something called image status or status image like this here's here's your style right here okay and on that status image i want to set up exactly these expected values that i passed in in my test control minus will take you back to where you were take these go back here and let's see here Where's my component? Uh, this guy here. Here you go. So this is me literally setting up the style, you know, in C sharp strongly typed way. Now all I gotta do is just take up that setup style and go at the on initialize where we set up the component status and say set up the style. Okay, what else do I wanna do? I want to go and say, well, uh, so, so if you're, if you're building Blazor application, always kind of break your property. So it's a lot easier to read like that, but here's what I'm going to do as well. I'm going to go here and say, okay, in here, I want my style base and here's a reference, right? And here's my style element. That's the, that's the, the, the attachment that helps us kind of test what's going on. But also I want to pass a style, which is just style. So the property that I created for styling, it's basically just this guy. So technically I did my job, right? Technically I passed in the style downstream. My test now should pass. Let's take a look. Here we go. And pass. 
Does this mean that the test passing, does this mean that the components are rendering properly? I don't know. Let's find out. Technically, what your unit test will be telling you is exactly what, what, what is in reality. Let's find out. Look. So now the values are properly rendering. Absolutely 100%. No issues there. Rendering just fine. Right? This is this guy. Remember, if I go in the back here and I do a, a comment in this whole area like this. So you see, I commented all my style and I do a hot reload. Look what happens. Watch this. Or maybe I need to refresh my screen here. Look, the style is completely off. Right? And while I like the exotic color, that's not, that's not what we really want to do. This is a chance, right? This is innovation for you, right? Because you're basically literally bringing everything back to C Sharp. You will never need a CSS class. You'll never even need to know CSS. Because what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go and say, OK, for some of these properties, I'm going to even give you the options, right? I'm going to give you the option to go and say, you know, what are the options that I need to type in there? In CSS, the IDE is helping you out. For the most part, like if you go here and type in CSS, if I say my status image to like this, the ID is kind of helping you out here, right? But what if the ID is not with you? The property on the object is a lot more um, solid than something like this, right? The ID will help you here. If you're using something else, it might not support you, right? But this is also test driven. That solves a problem for me and hopefully it will solve a problem for you. Hopefully it'll give you kind of insight. Now I can literally just go here and just throw that guy away, the CSS file away, because I don't need it, right? This is this is a system for C# -sharp developers. Here's how I'm gonna do CSS for my, or at least I'm gonna experiment with it, right? What does the code behind this look like, right? So let me just go here and say, okay, that I actually the, I actually my made. And this just brings so much happiness to my heart, just looking at something like this and be able to go and say, yeah, I actually can test drive my styles. Look, should set up component styles. And that's exactly what happens. Two things that came out of this that are really a big advantage. I don't have to do this hacky colon colon deep thing. I don't like it. You know, I don't like it. It doesn't make sense to me. But more importantly, you know, now my system now everything is in the code. There isn't anything going on outside of that realm that I don't know about, right? Uh, let me mark this as pass real quick. And then let me take you on a tour, a quick tour. So it's push. OK. Um, OK, I'm going to give you a link to this so you can experiment with it as well. You could just pull that repo and it'll just help you out. Let me go here. Here's. You see, uh, experiment with sharp styles. This pull request is not for merging. This is only for show showcasing uh, using C sharp instead of CSS. Okay, and I'm gonna create this as a draft pull request because I don't want anyone to actually merge this. Okay. Cool. Now let me take you on it. Let me close the 50,000 things that I have open here. And let me find a what what this code looks like, right? Okay. So if you go to nuget.org and you type in sharp styles you're going to find this tiny library in here. It's version 0.2 because I tried one before and then I lost all my code, you know, in some other machine. So I had to do it again. That's the only reason why it's 0.2. If you go into the source repository of this, you know, you will see all the works, right? You'll see here, we basically have a model and we have a bunch of attributes and the model literally see that's the documentation that I was just telling you about a second ago, literally every single, um, uh, CSS rule that you can possibly imagine is there. And there's many, 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 many of them. Okay. This is also, even though it's super POC prototype, it's also test driven, right? 
not test driven to the point where I want it to be, but yeah, I'm going to create a bunch of hard coded, you know, uh, styles and I'm going to actually generate it and test and see if this actually works the way I expect it to. Right. Um, what are the things that, are, that actually are a, an impediment for me in building a system like this? If we go back to DMX portal, there are situations where I can't, I, I don't handle these situations today, which is things like first child, like this. CSS sharp styles can't do that for you yet, right? Um, you know, things like that, that nesting kind of pattern is not there yet, right? Um, there is no auto completion. Like, for instance, with colors, I want to give you an enum, like a normal person, and I want you to go and just pick up a color and it just renders the color on the screen. We don't have that yet. But hopefully, as I'm experimenting with this and building, you know, real life projects like these, hopefully you'll get the chance to kind of see something like that evolve and grow. And that's where most of my projects come from. You know, they basically come from a need. You know, it just so happens that this need is is in a project that is in the open source space. In the past on my YouTube channel, you will see me kind of building things and I'll give you some sort of, you know, maybe high level need for it, but I won't tell you exactly what. But luckily, you know, I'm building something in the open source space in my day job, you know, and this is something I felt like I could I could use. So I was like, OK, let's go ahead and build something like that and see see how that works. This has been something on my mind for a while. Now that I'm hitting it, let's go and do it. Um, with that being said, I hope you found this a little bit, you know, useful, maybe inspirational. You know, for some people, it might be a little bit comical, C Sharp and CSS and stuff like that. You know, take a look. I'll drop the links in the uh, description. And as usual, if you have any uh, comments, questions, concerns, you know, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another video.